Today we're going to take a look at how to build the most simple radiation detector ever. What you need for this is a can that is not coated on the inside, so it, it must be conductive on the inside, which you can check with a multimeter, like this one. You can just uh, check if it uh, conducts or not. And if it does, you're good to go. And then we need uh, we need a little resistor. I'm using a 4.7 kilo ohms resistor here, but anything above 1 kilo ohm will be okay. And we need a connector to just a normal standard 9 volts battery. And we need, well, some wiring, um, soldering iron and solder, of course. And we need a little semiconductor, a transistor. Um, it's going to be an NPN Darlington transistor. That is just a type of bipolar transistor with uh, like two of them connected. Uh, this is done in just one case here, so you can just buy them anywhere. Just make sure you get NPN Darlington transistors. Um, I'm actually using a BC517826. Um, PC517826. But as I said, just uh, any NPN Darlington should work. Now we need to connect a little wire to the base, which you can see here. The base or the wire will be inserted in a little hole in the top of your can. But be careful that none of the wires of the transistor touch the can at all. So you can see that in my setup none of the transistor's legs actually touch anything here and that's very important so anyway the middle the base leg goes here and uh, the collector of the transistor goes to the negative pole of the uh, battery and the other one is just to connect your multimeter which is probably the most expensive part you have to have in order to construct this ion chamber Further on, you will also have to cover up the hole on the other side with uh, something. And very handy is aluminum foil. It's cheap, available in every household, and leaves heart beaters and gamma radiation through. But you could, in theory, also place a radioactive source you want to measure inside the chamber and then just close it up and measure it. If you don't close it up at all, uh, stray radiation and electromagnetic fields will likely get into the chamber and give you really random readings. But you can try, maybe it works for you, so let's see. So I just put the aluminum foil on the can opening. As I said, the base leg must not touch anything. So there's a sufficient distance between the foil and the base leg. Now I'll put the battery into place here. And of course connect the multimeter. So the multimeter is now connected to the amateur leg here and just right after the resistor on this side. Uh, the resistor, oh, I forgot to mention that, you just have to solder the resistor to the can, just there or on the outside if it's conductive or wherever, just, well, with a bit of a distance to the base here. So let's just turn on the voltmeter and see what it says. A while until it drops. I don't know why that is exactly. I'm not all that literate with electronics, but okay, going down to the next lower setting. And you can see the reading sort of adjusts, but it's not all that stable. That is because of random electromagnetic fields, which I can show you. I'll just move my hand and touch the resistor a bit. And you can see there's a lot of stuff happening. And now I'll just stand up from my chair. Do nothing else but stand up from my chair. And you can see that causes a lot of interference as well. Like, really, a lot. So I'll just sit down and not move at all so it can adjust again. The thing is, uh, to prevent this, you could probably build an electromagnetic shield from aluminum over the top here. But if you're not doing that, here you just have to keep still and make sure that nearby power sockets are turned off and yeah. 
that should be sufficient for a little demonstration chamber. But now let's actually put a radioactive source into place. So, you can see we have a reading of just 12.6 now. I'll put in a cesium-137 source just below the thing here. There it is. Put that on top and wait again because of course I touched it and stuff, but you can see that the reading is rising. Cesium-137 or 0.25 microcurie. It's a beta and gamma emitter and you can see when I'm keeping still you get a significant reading above background. I'll actually place another source which is barium-133. Okay, here it is. And that doesn't do much as you can see. Barium-133 is a pure gamma emitter so it doesn't cause all that many interactions. Um, you, know, you can see more about that in my videos about measuring alpha, beta and gamma radiation as it would be too much to explain just everything in this video so just watch the other videos if you're interested or if you don't know why this is the case. But now let's see um, we're moving from the indirectly ionizing radiation from the gamma radiation to directly ionizing radiation and pure directly ionizing radiation and that will be a strontium-90 source. Strontium-90 is a near pure beta emitter so let's see what that does. And well as you can see that increases the reading we get a lot. And well just for the hell of it here's my old Warbird altimeter which you've probably seen in another video it's very hot and painted with a radioactive radium paint. Let's see what happens if we place that under our self-made iron chamber. There we go. Oh, it's out of range here. Holy shit. That is a lot of ionizations going on. Let's see, it's dropping. I'll just move that on to the Warbird altimeter again. Yep. Ionizing like hell. So here's the shopping list. You need a can that is not coated on the inside, so it must be conductive on the inside. You need uh, some aluminum foil or other type of foil to cover the front bit. You need a 9 volts battery with a connector. You'll need a resistor that is above 1 kilo ohms resistance. An NPN Darlington transistor, which is a type of bipolar transistor. You can just ask for that in the shop, I suppose. You need a voltmeter to measure the flow of current. You need a soldering gun. Well, maybe you can actually do without a soldering gun, I don't know. But best to have a soldering gun as well. And then, well, just some wires solder tapes etc maybe radioactive sources to test out your chamber